we're going to use our topics to add hyperlink to a web page because that's something that you may need to do with this. So let's give this a go. We're going to just remove the topic heading. Go and place this up in the corner. Edit our artboard so it only includes that area because that's what we really want to deal with in this exercise. There we go. And exit. Now we're going to go file and export. Export as. We'll make that SVG. All we need to do then is just go show code. There is our code. Let's have a look at the code. We're going to paste this directly into JS Fiddle. So we can do some experiments. So we'll choose run. We might tidy that as well. Here we go. So we have topic, topic two, topic three, topic four. First thing we need to do is make it so that when they mouse over, it actually shows the cursor. All we need to do is go to our first polygon and put in a normal style equals our cursor and run. There we go, style equals cursor, colon, pointer. And now when they move over it, it turns into a pointer as so though it's something that they can click on. So we can also add in our CSS. We could put in here dot polygon overlay, colon hover, put in hover, our brackets. I just might move that down a bit so I can see a bit more. And opacity and make it 0.5 is fine. So we just applied a class or created a CSS class. So we just need to add that class in here. So polygon overlay, we'll just give that a quick run. And you can see there, whenever you mouse over, it changes to an opacity of 0.5. So I've applied that to the polygon. So there's our class. Uh, 0.5 is probably a bit much. So we'll go 0.7 and have a look. That's a bit better. We can then also apply uh, that class to all the other four polygons. There we go. So now when they move over, it does that. Now just to save us applying that style, we can also put the cursor uh, pointer style into our CSS as well. And that just makes it a bit cleaner. And click run. And now when you hover over, it changes to a cursor and it also changes to a light. So we've we've covered that part of it first. Now, you'll also notice here um, that which is a bit frustrating is that when you move over the writing, it thinks that you're going to edit the text instead. But because that changes to text, what we can do is create a group and wrap a group around each of those and apply the class to the group. So if we remove that class, we create a group, so bracket G, uh, is what we use in SVG and we'll put that group around uh, the polygon and around the text. Select run and now you can see that the text doesn't select itself, it selects the whole group. So if we applied that group around each of the polygons or polygon and text, there's our group there, our group again, our last group. There we go. We'll run that and now it's all working much, much better. Okay, so the next step is to apply some HTML to allow someone to actually click on these objects. And to do that is really, really simple. We can go to our group class and below our group class, we can just put in bracket A href equals, and we could put in here https slash slash ricochet.com.au. And then we need to put the rest of the A at the end and select run. And we probably should put in here target equals underscore blank. 
this side opens in a new page. Let's run that. So now when we hover over topic and we click on topic, it will take us to the Ricochet website. There we go. So that's how we can add a href or a web link to our scalable vector graphics and also add CSS and CSS classes. Uh, this is a great way of showing you how there is so many things that you can do, uh, so many areas you can go with your SVG to make it really, really useful to in your web-based content, all starting from Adobe Illustrator.